So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by my good friend and Hall of Fame promoter, Frank Warren. Frank, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you've recovered from your significant injuries from the promo video. Uh, how, how did they rope you into that? How did they convince you to do it? That's how they did it. They, <laughs> yeah, were, genuine they were genuine injuries. Yeah, I bet they were. Did you have fun? Did you enjoy doing it? Yeah, I took a couple of my grandkids along to it as well, and uh, they watched all the filming. So that, that's the, that, I've got to be honest, that's the, one of the main reasons I went, because uh, they kept saying, come on, you've got to do it. So I went along with them, and they, they had a good time. And it, yeah, it was good fun. Like it, was, it was, you know, everybody got involved. And uh, it's nice. It was nice. How impressed were you with the finished product? I thought it was excellent, wasn't it? It was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, promo and it's certainly everyone's talking about it and that's what the objective of a promo is to make everybody talk about the event and they're and they're certainly doing that and it was a it's fabulous and uh his excellency turkey he done he you know he's he's done a brilliant job with the promotion i mean the budgets to do these things are fantastic and it's uh it's great for boxing did you charge a fee for your acting services of course i did i mean I, i'm 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 uh I've, I've been told now that I'm going to get a contract from uh, Warner Brothers, so I'm waiting to get that, and I'm going to probably pack the boxing in. I think there's a bit of Oscar buzz as well, Frank, yeah. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, a bit of Oscar De La, De La Hoya. About De La Hoya it. buzz, yeah. Let's not talk about that, eh? We'll get sued Definitely. before we stop. Definitely um, not. So we found out uh, last week that TNT box office will be carrying Day of Reckoning, as are The Zone. When everyone was talking about it being on the zone initially, and we knew it wasn't going to be exclusive, were you kind of desperate to tell people it was also going to be on TNT, or, or did you have to keep it quiet? No, I'm 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 pretty easy about it. I mean, look, what's going to be is going to be. We all know we know what's happening. As long as we know what's happening, that's all that matters. And uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's great. It's 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 you know the more the merrier. The more people see it, it's priced at a very competitive price for everyone. So. I think it, I think it's great. I mean, it's great, and it and it's a fabulous event. It is a fabulous event. How has this kind of new spirit of collaboration all come together? Not just with the TV networks, but yourself and Eddie Hearn met for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Look, it, the, the catalyst for it is Saudi Arabia. The catalyst for it is uh, is is uh, is AG. He's the one who who's who's got behind this. He's the big believer in boxing, and he's making boxing a big part of. The Riyadh Festival and all what happens um, out there has is, is basically been is, is emanated from him and he's passionate. He's got deep passion for the sport. Um, we work very closely with him, Queensbury. We, you know, we've have a good working relationship, and uh, I'm I'm just delighted. I'm delighted the way the whole thing's going and the way it's all panned out. You know, the fact that we've managed to get. Uh, some of the promoters, some other promoters working with us on the show has been brilliant. Um, I'm delighted that um, AJ's on the card in a really, really good competitive fight against Oscar, against, Oscar, against sorry, against Walling, which is a, a, a real cracking fight, uh, intriguing fight. And I'm delighted that Deontay's on there against Joe Parker. Again, it's a cracking fight. And these two guys are in a position now where they can't afford to make us to slip up. They want to be part of the big, you know, the big, the bigger picture. They got to win these their respective fights, and they're not easy fights for them. And there's a huge number of promoters involved, as you alluded to. There, are you kind of classed as the lead promoter? Are you kind of organising the the bill as well? We, we, Queensbury, well, Queensbury are involved in all the shows. There, we'd be involved in the shows, and that we'd be working with various promoters. For example, the next the next fight out there will be Tyson on the seventeenth. Will be Tyson. The unification, Tyson uh, yeah. against Lucic for all the belts, and we'll be working, working, you know, with Aegis, his team, and uh, and um, K two will be involved in that with us, along obviously with Seller. But we, you know, we we have a, a, a very very strong relationship with Seller. It's a, a formalised relationship, and we, you know, we're delighted where we are. So if uh, Eddie were to step out of line in any way for this show, would it be your job to go and kind of give him a talking to? I'll set the zombies on him. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no Now everybody's working well. There's no, I mean, you know, look, the fights, we're a week away. What can happen unless anybody gets injured? And most of the serious, all the serious sparring's over now. So providing everybody is, is, uh, stays well, we, we've got a show on and, and the rest of it's a sideshow. 
that's just a sideshow. It's the fights that matter. And you've got you've got eight fabulous fights on there. I mean, real good competitive fights. Boxing when heaven. Say, boxing heaven. When you say it's a sideshow, for you it is, but for a lot of fans out there, seeing you and Eddie Hearn together in the same room for the first time it was pretty stirring stuff. What, what was it like for you? What did you make of him first impressions? Well, I said to him afterwards, how was it for you? <laughs> um, for me, it was another day in the office. <laughs> Almost literally. But no, I mean, did, was there many words exchanged or was it just a brief hello? We had a very, it was a very brief meeting in, uh, in one of the rooms at the back. Uh, my son, George, um, said, you know, Eddie's here. He said, uh, let's get everyone together. And we did that. And I said, hello, how are you? Good, let's make this work. And, and uh, I think we, one thing we both agreed on, and we certainly, you know, in, in, in every way agree on this, we've got to be idiots to F this up. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I'd agree. Was there any element, because uh, I know what you're like, I don't know what your background is. Were you, were you kind of sizing him up a little bit, even though it was all friendly on the surface? <laughs> no, he was. Uh, I, 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 um, no, I weren't sizing him up. I, I, I've had his measure for years. Don't worry about that. Yeah, nothing new to learn. Yeah. You talked about the show itself and how they're they're competitive fights, particularly at the top end with AJ and Wilder. Who do you think's taking the bigger risk between those two ahead of their apparently signed fight now for March? I think they're both. I think it's equally they're in you know equally risky fights because what is at stake for both of them? You know they both got to win their fights. They win their fights and hopefully they you know we're going to get it on the two of them's going to get it on, and they get it on. Uh, they get they get to a situation where hopefully again that we that the time Tyson. And Usyk have their fights and 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 various contractual obligations afterwards. That that we can get one of those get one of those guys in for the you know to to fight the the number one. And you said about everyone's working together, but you've been involved in all the Saudi events. You've clearly got a close relationship with His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. Will you have an involvement in the Joshua Wilder fight if it does take place in March? Yeah, we'll be of course we'll be it'd be Queensbury will be. Uh, We'll be promoting it with Seller and obviously in association with with uh, the other parties. Wow. How have you, because a lot of people have said this over the last couple of weeks, it's probably not news to you, but you've quickly become, again, one of the most powerful promoters in the world. You, you'll say you never went away, I'm sure. But what has been well, I've been, this... been going away, for, according to everybody, for about 40 odd years. What's behind uh, this but... recent resurgence, if you like? Well, it's not really, you say resurgence. I mean, that's the way some people look at it. I mean, we've been, you know, with Queensbury, which the CEO is my son, George, and and uh, various people we work with, and my other son, Francis, with his management company and, and other managers that we work with. We've been building and building and building. And we worked very hard on all heavyweight division over the last few years. And we, we, we got to a stage where we guided all our guys into real good positions. Um, to fight for to fight for various titles, and that's what we always continue to do. And this this opportunity came along, and uh, as I say, my you know George has done most George has done most of the work on it behind the scenes, to be quite honest. And uh, and it's uh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant for boxing, brilliant for us, and we just you know we will continue to do what we always do, which is boxing's all about. Development. It's all about bringing, you know, nurturing and developing fighters. That's what it's about. Because all boxers get old. All boxers have their day, and then it comes a time where they hang up their gloves. And in the meantime, you need to you need to be working on the next generation. And that's what we've been doing that for since since we started out. And we're in a great position. We've got some great fights land, lined up where I think some of these younger fighters are going to be able to take advantage of what's going on in in Saudi in the future. So, yeah, I suppose in, um, it, it, is, it, is really, it is really exciting what's happening. And I'm obviously delighted to be involved in it. And Queensbury are delighted to be involved in it. But um, it, just, it will go from strength to strength. It's going to, you know, you're looking what's happening, the events. I said, when, we, when, when Tyson and Nagano fight was made and it was opening up the Riyadh season, I said back then, this will be a game changer. 
that I remember saying those, saying that to you and various other people. And so it's been. I could see what's going to happen, and that's what it is. It's a game changer, and it's it's great for British boxing, great for world boxing, great for Saudi boxing. <laughs> How key to this has been your personal relationship with Turkey, Al Sheikh? Uh, look, we're all on the same wavelength. Um, we're all on the same length, wavelength working together. And I think, again, I think it's been, you know, that, you know, I've got a decent relationship and George has got a fabulous relationship. He's, he does all the, all the work on the, on the, uh, and our team, you know, a lot of our youngsters in my office, a lot of the guys in there, they're working on a daily basis. They're in Saudi at the moment working very hard behind the scenes to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. And we, and we, and we build on each show, we build on it and make the next show better. And we're, we're, we're somebody that is a major, major boxing fan or a fan of boxing who really does enjoy, um, enjoy being involved in it and enjoy it. And, and certainly as, as, as you can see, has made it part of a very, very, big cultural event that takes a takes place over a, nearly six months which is the Riyadh season I mean it's not just boxing it's loads of loads of world-class events from all around the world not just western world from the eastern world and it's it, it's a it's a it's a fa it's become a fabulous destination I mean all the big stars are playing now and we're you know we've we, we, we're involved in that now so it's you know it's just brilliant and I think um for boxing it's a shot in the arm it's, it's a shot in the arm, and for Brit for Britain, British people, British uh, fans who can't get there, you're going to be watching the fights at prime time. You're not going to sit up till five or six o'clock in the morning to watch them. And Fury Usyk, February seventeenth. Any chance that it gets delayed any further than that, or is that now set in stone? You're not hearing got... this rubbish about it. I don't know where this is all coming from. Why has it got to be delayed? The date's been announced. You know, God forbid anybody gets injured, that can happen. But no, that's on. Tyson's in serious training. I know that Usyk is. He's been in training for a while. It's all ready to go, and that's going to come around very quickly. And just before I let you go, I'm interviewing uh, Big John Fury later on this afternoon. I'm sure he'll be full of festive cheer. Uh, but he made some comments recently about Tyson saying he looked like a fighter in decline against Ngannou, and he was concerned about the Usyk fight. Is he just trying to sell the fight, make it look like Usyk's got more of a chance, or, or does he really believe it, do you think? I don't know. You've got to ask him that. Oh, you know, well, we'll ask him the question. You know, look, Tyson didn't look didn't look himself in the last fight, but that can't be an excuse because Nagano didn't look like everybody thought he was going to look like. He actually shaped up and looked like a boxer and and, and fought and fought well. Um, Tyson, you know, he wasn't quite himself, but he came through the fight. He won the fight, and it's a lesson learned. Um, he, he doesn't make excuses. He said his training camp was a tough camp and, and he'd he, he done everything he had to do for it. And I think a lot of his sparring partners have come out and said the same thing since. That happens. Sometimes you can have a bad day at the office, but he's won. He won the fight and he won that for his determination. In fact, he has got a good chin. He gets up off the floor if he gets caught. I don't want to see him going on the floor, but he no. does. But he never, and I keep saying it, he never had any footage to look at this guy in a ring. And, he and we knew he was competitive. We knew he could punch. We knew that in, if it, in, 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 in close, that he would, he would maul, he would hold on, he would hold, and that's their game, the UFC, you know, the UFC and MMA fighters. But what we didn't expect him was to come out and have quite a bit of boxing ability, and he had good boxing ability. He was smart, and they'd done, they'd done their homework. And they'd done their homework because they had a lot of footage to look at. Great stuff. Frank, I could talk to you for ages, but I know there's other people waiting. So have a great time for the rest of the day. And um, I'm sure we'll catch up before Christmas. I'll see you next week, Nelson. Bye, Dan. Take care, Frank. All right. Yes. Bye-bye.